for before it dries. So if you're not aligned right, you can easily um, pull the tape up and bring in however much you need and then you just want to make sure you burnish that down really nicely. Okay, so then it's going to be hard for you to see but I'm going to wet down that inside tape that we put down and I'm just going to use my fingers to apply that to the side inside part of my box. Hopefully you can see that. All right, let's go ahead and do this other side. And I think I have, yes. Okay, let's go ahead and wet this one. And we're going to butt that up against your folded edge and then bring it over to the back of your box, lining up your chipboard sides. So they're nice and even. Like I said, you do have a little bit of play time to make sure that you have your tape all right and so then now you're going to do the bottom part of your box same way we've been doing it I just want to make sure that I have the right strips I'm going to trim that down a little bit could use a little bit more so let's just trim a little bit more and it's the same method I'm gonna fold it in half and burnish it I'm gonna fold it in half and burnish it and then spray all right and then I'm just gonna take lay that over so that the folded line is at the edge of my box. Okay. And use your fingers to help press that in. And then you can always go back with your bone folder. And if you have any overhang with your tape, you can just trim it off if you want. You just want to really make sure that it is down really well. See what a nice edge it gives your box. really like it. We'll go ahead and do the other side. So I'm just laying that down on my box using my fingers to kind of line everything up so you get a nice crisp edge. And if you get a little bubble in your tape it's forgiving enough that you can lay that down easily with a bone folder and let's trim out any excess all right and essentially we have our box put together but like I said you want to reinforce the inside of your box as well and it's very similar to the way we did the outside except we're going to invert our strip when we fold it so go ahead and measure out a piece of the tape so this is the paper side of the tape that's not gummed the paper side instead of folding towards Sunny side to sunny side, we're going to fold the opposite direction so that we are butting up the dull side or the paper side of the tape in half. And same, the method after that is almost identically the same. We're going to burnish and then we're going to wet the paper down just like we've been doing.
This time though, we have replicated that edge inside the box. And so you're just going to take that folded edge and put it in the very corner of the side that you, you're working on so that the tape looks like that inside your box. And you wanna do that all the way around your box using your brown folder to burnish that tape down. And if you have a little bit of hangover, you can just fold it backwards because what we're going to do is cover these edges in the next step that I'm going to show you. You just want to make sure it's nice and down really well. And I hope you guys can see this on the video. And you're going to do that all the way around the inside of your box. And that just gives your box a lot of stability because you're going to have some weight to it. The next thing, so once you pretend I have that all done, uh, one thing I like to do is finish the edges of my chipboard. Um, I don't always like the sharp edge of the chipboard. I like it to be a little bit more substantial and squared off. So let me show you how I do that. I take a strip of the tape. It's the same method that we've been using but I really like finishing my projects um, the edges of the chipboard the top edges of the chipboard like this because I think it makes it a lot cleaner so we're going to wet and what I do is I just take that folded edge and lay it on top of the chipboard and I press down, I'm pressing down to get a good connection with the chipboard. And you can use your bone folder to press out any lumps you might have. Sometimes the lumps add character though. Okay, so it's starting to look even cleaner now. So then I take and lightly press while the tape is wet, lightly press my bone folder over that tape. And what it does, it gives a nice squared off top to the chipboard and it's a little thicker and I actually really like that. Let me do it one more time here for you. I'll just use this piece and cut it in half. I think it's gonna fit, oh, it's a little short. So let's do this. So it's, it's just a little details when you build your boxes or your projects using this method. It just makes it cleaner and um, I'm all for a cleaner look to my projects. So I took that folded edge and I'm laying it on the top part of that chipboard and then I'm just pressing down on both sides. Burnish if you want to make sure you have good contact and then lightly press your bone folder you can see it come to shape when you do that it's just a really clean nice look so once you do that all the way around you're almost on the home stretch you're almost done the next thing you want to do is choose what color acrylic paint you're going to paint your edges um, with and let me get the example out here I, I chose black um, works well with most of Graphic 45's um, papers. However, I have also used Distress Ink to distress the sides of the tape. You really don't want to see the tape at all. You, you do want to cover it um, a little bit. You don't have to paint the whole or distress the whole project. 
um, the whole box, but it does add some dimension to it. So I'm going to show you both methods. I'm going to get out some of my paints here and my paintbrush. I use this paintbrush a lot. That's why it's stained <laughs> black. I use inexpensive acrylic paint and this is not too bad. My favorite, favorite all time is Liquitex Mars Black acrylic color. I love the coverage of it. I love how it um, goes on the brush and the project and it gives you a really nice sheen. But I also use other brands of inexpensive acrylic paint and this one happens to be Craft Smart from Michaels and it was about 79 cents so it really just depends on the look that I want to get and I did a little sample for you to show you the difference on this side is the Liquitex Mars Black acrylic paint it gives you kind of a slick shiny not too shiny matte look on this side is the Craft Smart acrylic paint and it is more of a chalky feel to it, a little bit more dull, but that's quite all right. As a matter of fact, with this um, type of paint, it's really cool to do some more distressing on it. It has a chalky feel. So that's the difference between the two paints that I'm showing you here. So what I do is I usually pour this out on a paper tray, but since I'm only gonna be doing a little bit, I'm just gonna put some on my brush to show you how well the paper tape holds up to the paint. So as you can see here, all you wanna do is a little edge to your tape, just a little edge. And you don't have to go all the way. The other thing I like about the Mars Black uh, or the acrylic paints from Liquitex they actually dry pretty fast. So you just want to get that down and you see how well that tape holds up to the paint. It holds up really, really well. I love it. And it, and it doesn't matter. Here I can even do the Craft Smart to show you on the other side what that looks like. So here's the Craft Smart. Um, acrylic paint. Let me just get a little bit out there. One thing I might, I might want to add is that you may use more of the Craft Smart than you do of the Liquitex only because it's a bit of a thinner paint but it still looks great up against the Mars Black so from a Liquitex. Still looks great and you just want to you know go in a little bit. Okay, so that's the Craft Smart and that's the Mars Black uh, from Liquitex. Let me take and get some Distress Ink here. And let's do Black Soot. So this is uh, Tim Holtz Ranger's uh, Distress Ink in Black Soot. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like using that on the tape. So you can still get a really cool distressed look by applying this to the tape. And so the mailing tape is a really, really forgiving, easy, adaptable source for making construction strips on your project. So I really like the way that looks at, as well. And lay on as much as you want or as little, but again, it really has a really nice effect. And so I hope you try using the mailing tape for your next project. And you just need to decide, and you wanna paint the inside too or distress the inside as well. You want to then decide what type of pages that you're going to make. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was really fun to put it together for you. 